in order to start with myself first and set up as an example, I need to understand what is it that I want to do? What is it that I want to sell to the public? Is it my services as consultant? No. I mean, there's plenty of consultants. You can Google consultants in the Middle East or you can Google consultants in Saudi or anywhere. But I started, I want to sell my brand, my idea. Who am I? And how do I stand in the map of all the consultants? And what differentiates me? I started working on myself first. Yes. So I started working on myself, strategize myself. Without talking about the fundamentals, mashallah, the gentleman here touched, is the first thing is, what's the definition of brand? I mean, if you think about brand, what do you think of? Most people see symbols, logos, and so on. But that's not what you create relationship with. Do you create a relationship as a consumer? What's, what's your favorite brand? Yeah. Lipton Ice Tea. I was expecting to see a beer. <laughs> okay. Lipton Ice Tea. So, do you have, what's the relationship that you have with Lipton Ice Tea? It's your caffeine. So that's where the value where you see. Okay. And what's the perception you have? It is refreshing. See what she just described right now, she described the brand. The simple definition I've always told, and I just told people in Paris, anywhere where I speak, it's very simple definition. A brand is an idea you want to insert in the mind of your audience. It's like a file, a small chip. A small chip that has a story, that has reference. That every time when you close your eyes, when you think of Apple, for example, there's so many different characteristics, attributes you think of Apple. And the experience, your cell phone, you, the way you hold it, the way you play with the apps and so on. If you don't register, if a brand does not register in the mind of the audience, what happens to it? I wish it fails. It's a commodity. Because brands are about what? About values. If, you don't, if a brand does not bring a value to the table, you're not going to have a relationship with brand. You reject it. You have a perfect relationship with that iced tea, right? Can you visualize it? It's inspiring. Would you buy more? See? That's a relationship. That's a relationship. So what's the most important part of the brand? It's the core. Who is this brand? The essence. The gentleman pretty much touched. And the essence is divided in two sides. The functional side of it and the emotional side of it. The functional is when you describe the product and you describe the values, the emotional, is the look and feel. So, but sometimes... There's a lot of words being thrown on the essence itself. It confuses not only us who are working on the strategies, it also confuses the customer. Because the more you throw words, the more the brand goes out of shape, out of focus. So relatively, there's only one single word can carry the whole thing of the essence itself. In my case, for example, I mean, my core, my core, my being, the way I live every day, the way I carry myself, the time I wake up, the way I write, the way I talk to my clients, the way I call my associates, and so on, and the way I carry myself, and the sort of thoughts that I carry, only one word is my essence. One word. And that word is eccentric. See? That's one word. That's my essence. I'm eccentric. As much as that word sounds strange, I love it because it describes me. It's who I am. It's the brand that I can live every day. But when I come with one word and I decide that word is a pretty word and I say that's my essence, but I'm not able to carry it every day, what happens to the brand? You cannot create a relationship at all. 
Again, we hear two words always. Brand and branding. Brand and branding. Brand and branding. And they're two amazing words. They became so fashionable that everybody now wants to be a brander. Everybody wants to be the branding agency. As much as the brand is the idea, branding is the relationship. It's everyday practice. Everyday practice. So what is the idea that I'm trying to sell? Hello? What's the idea that I'm trying to sell to my clients since I'm eccentric? Since my core essence is eccentric, what is it that I'm trying to sell to my clients? Or even to you? So when you meet me on blog or you see my post, you go, man, this guy is... The idea I'm trying to sell is that I want to evolve or revolutionize the knowledge of branding, brand and marketing and also the practice. That's the idea I want to send. That's the idea I'm trying to sell almost every day. That's the idea. But how can I summon this idea in order for this idea to be real? What would it be? Simple. That I am the authority of branding and marketing as a subject. So comes and says, wow, if that's the authority, and we don't see you, Saeed, um, you don't come to Dar al-Hikmah every day, but how can we feel that? So when you come and visit my touch points, like they've described, which is, if you go to my LinkedIn, you go to my blog, you go to my website, asbaeed.com, you will see that my job is all about impacting change. In order to revolutionize, I have to make change. I have to invite change. And to make it more real is also, like they've impacted, they said before, who are the ones who are endorsing Saeed Baghid? So when you have authors from America and consultants from America and Europe are endorsing Saeed Baghid, then Saeed Baghid becomes real, right? Because these are experts from overseas. We actually, honestly, we only believe people with blue eyes, blonde hair. Well, this guy could be an expert. I can get a testimonial from this guy, and I'm very happy. But if I go to my client, and that's Mark, and this is Muhammad, he said, hey, I believe Mark. <laughs> See what I mean? So in order to make it more believable, I have an agent in London that books me for speaking, so I go to New York, Hong Kong, London, Paris, Rome, and I speak on the same subject. But imagine, hmm, be careful, imagine, name, Saeed Baagil. Where the hell is this guy from? <laughs> Middle East. <laughs> what do they know about branding and marketing in the Middle East? Do you guys manufacture watches in the Middle East? No. Do you manufacture cars? No. So. What do you guys know about branding and marketing? But there is. There is. But once they meet the person, he speaks, they see him, which resembles pretty much of what they're related to, which is the bow tie run glass and so on. So there's an authority there, which is the brand idea. So as much as I dissected my brand to understand the core of it, and the essence and the idea and the purpose and the positioning which is unconventional who am I speaking to? I wish it's everyone no brand fits for everyone let's get that straight first because brand are about what? relevant and preferred the one that fits for everyone is something that's commodity price driven less values let me give you the detergent example Omo has a clear target audience, but then you go to a detergent in East Africa, Somalia or Kenya, in a poor area. Do you think that lady is looking, what, what is she looking at? The mother. 100%, first thing on the mind, she needs to afford it. So is that a brand? It's a commodity. Right? So every brand has its what? Repeat after me. Every brand has what? Definitely. 
if a brand does not fit in the tar- to the target audience, it's not relevant. It's not preferred. Iced tea, relevant, preferred. She smiled, see? A brand needs to inspire you. If you're not, it's not going to inspire you, you're not going to shake that pocket. Like for example, he gave you the Nespresso example. For me, I'm a d- coffee drinker, but I will not drink Nespresso. I won't have my espresso from Nespresso. I have from Segafredo, from Lavazza, because it's much richer. So every brand has its target audience. Second part of the target audience, which is very essential, extremely important, is besides knowing what their age is and their income, what kind of car they drive and um, their insights, it's you need to visualize them. As much as this sounds crazy, you're able to visualize them. Because we're all broken down into communities, into social communities. So if you cannot visualize me, if I'm your customer and you cannot visualize me, would you be able to sell me something? It's difficult, extremely. From the theory point, I can dissect the target audience like I just said now, but that does not mean I'm going to drive anything. I won't be able to communicate to them if I cannot visualize them. I cannot relate to them. As much as brands are divided in their core essence of emotion and functionality, like it was described in previous subject, but if you're asking for premium, brands are emotional. Even the time when you guys sit at home and talk about your favorite brands, you're very emotional in the way you describe the brand, right? You're very emotional, you get excited, oh my God, this is amazing. Or even when, there's, when you see their print, any of your fashion brands, correct? So, my name is Saeed Bahagid. I'm a branding and marketing advisor. I used to be a consultant. I quit because there's a lot of work. So, I'm an advisor. I go in to corporate, their offices. I spend eight hours, I talk. Same way I'm doing right now. At the end, I give my recommendation. I get paid, I leave. I'm happy camper. That model works for me. I built my brand around that model. You cannot build a brand unless you understand the model of how you're gonna make money. If you build a brand without understanding the model of how you make money, you're not gonna make money. You're just going to look what? Pretty. That's it. Pretty logo. We've seen pretty brands here in Jitta. Seriously. A lot of pretty abayas. A lot of pretty cupcakes. Seriously. But you need to have a model. How do you make money without understanding the model? You need to close your eyes at night and be hard at me like me and visualize the model. Seriously. You need to think how that money is going to end up in your pocket. So when you talk to the customer, you understand. So you need to understand how you going to make money. So my job is an advisor. So an advisor, what do we do? We go in, we tell the big boys what to do on branding and marketing, recommendations, we leave. That's one of the mix that I'm selling. The other type of service that I'm selling is I go on stage like this I get invited I speak I get paid I'm not getting paid here I get paid I'm doing this for you guys <laughs> I get paid I leave I have my own blog I write people overseas want to buy some of my stuff people in the Middle East don't want to buy it they want it free I get paid they call them logos Do you guys know logos I don't know logos I know brands you know logos? These people, guys, will agree with me because none of us are designers. <laughs> we, we, logo or an identity, it's a symbol. It's, it's reference. But it's a small part of the whole entire brand life. Simply something that it's the external side. There's so much to life. You just said it. Brands are like human. They live, do they die? They do. 
they do but when do they revive again when the ceo decides to innovate the values of the brand when you have a ceo who doesn't care like for example gazaz is a dying brand anybody buys from gazaz here none of you are gazaz for sure i mean they could have innovated the other part that kills a brand is when it's shared values. When I share one, three types of value, then eventually two others or three others are proposing the same values and I was the first one that proposed it and the public relates to me, then I'm the stronger part. So they're a reflection to my values. So eventually they will die. So let me go back to symbols. To symbols. Is there any graphic designers here? Or marketing? Okay. No. Okay. Next one is for you. All right. So I'm going to put some symbols on top, and you guys just participate with me. I believe yesterday you guys had a brand exercise on, was it positioning? Yeah. So I want you to see the symbol and just relate with me. I mean, take me as a baby step. All right. Please. I mean, the name's not there. What it does is not there. Who's this? Who's this? Do you know who's this? Definitely not Ice T. <laughs> it's okay. She's she's a relative. Okay, who's this? Who's this? But what's the reference in your mind when you see this? What's the first thing, huh? The first reference is always the name, right? So the first thing you see is the name. How, how important is naming and branding? Oh my God. You get the wrong name, it's gone. Because it needs to be relevant, it needs to relate. You can go abstract, like Xerox means nothing. But Xerox innovated. They could play with the name. They created the category, which is a reference to copy today. But here, what's the name again? Is there any relevance to the Starbucks name and what they sell? How did they create the name? This exactly. I yes. Which is the brand exercise that they took you through. Okay, which is the essence, the positioning, and so on. And through the experience, which became the journey itself to become Starbucks rele relevant to coffee. Now, when you look at Starbucks today, there's relevance. You can say coffee, right? And you can say all the what other what what other coffee? Just coffee? So every time you hear the word Frappuccino, what's, what comes to mind? How about if somebody else launches Frappuccino? Right? See how strong it is. Now, I was just in Seattle a month ago and I went to Pike Street. I've been there before. It was the first store that Starbucks opened. Starbucks, when they first launched, when Howard Schultz decided to start Starbucks, he was selling what? Spices, tea, uh, uh, coffee, everything he can. It was a typical com commodity store on Pike Street in Farmer's Market in Seattle. He was selling everything. He failed. Did he quit? No. He never quit. He tried again. He tried again. He tried again. What's the reference that comes to this when you see this thing? This thing, I think, uh, it's a food, right? Yeah. I don't understand how this can go into technology, but... So, what's the reference when you see this? What's the name that comes to mind? Now, imagine when you come tomorrow and work on your brand. And then 20 years or 30 years from now, imagine your brand. Sorry, but honestly, from a symbol to call a name, that must be very powerful. Right? Is it powerful because of the price they offered? Why is it powerful? 
the idea and the values they brought to you guys. Phone is a phone, right? Nokia was what? Mobile, right? When Nokia tried to be a smartphone, impossible because it was a mobile. It was just a stupid phone. It's honest. Honestly, it was a stupid phone. So wants to evolve the brand and wants to be a smartphone. I'm sorry, but you grew up with me, Nokia. When my father used you, I used you, and you were just that basic phone. So all of a sudden, you want to be a smartphone? It's like Saeed Bagheer going Chinese next day. It doesn't make sense. Because you go back to the core essence of your brand. It's who you are. It's who experienced you. Now, if you want to change Nokia from a mobile to a smartphone, you have to wait three different or four, two or three different generations. Now, but what is it? This, what do these people sell you? The people at Apple. No. So, no. What's the idea they're selling you? Well, the core essence is definitely innovation. That's the, the, the one they live with every day. Well, what are they selling you? They're simply selling you a digital lifestyle. Don't you go shopping with your bags for um, Louis Vuitton and so on? And you never thought that technology can be a lifestyle. These people are doing it. I mean, sorry, but how many of you here have iPhones? And everyone that has Samsung probably hides it in the back and never raises a hand. And how many of you have Mac? So proud. If I see PC, everybody's going to put their hands down. Right? And if you have your cell phone in your pocket, and I told you listen to music, and you go and you plug it in, and I put that earpiece that's all like wired black, you know, ooh, right? But when you see it white, you know, oh, that's probably she's got an iPhone, right? They have delivered the idea right to the bone. Chapeau to these people, seriously. Every value reference I just gave you right now reflects on that brand. Today, Apple does not say, doesn't have to say I'm here. We say Apple is here. Right? Now, question is, what does Apple sell? Huh? See, that's the functional side when she says technology. But as a brand, we don't, they don't sell technology. Everybody sells technology. What do they sell? Digital lifestyle. They're pretty. Look at the phone. It's a pretty phone. Look at the... Have you ever seen when you go into somebody in a cafe, when they have a Mac, what do they do? Do they put it down? They're always like, like this, right? You notice, it's like this. She sits, she puts her Mac like this, and she goes, hey. Right? Because it's digitally lifestyle positioned. She's proud. Where's this thing? Next one is a pretty, I don't know if there's, if you guys know this brand, but I just picked it up. LG? LG. Great. LG. Uh, how about you guys from Perception? Okay, this is a great ex exercise right here. What, what sort of Perception does this give? If the brand name's life is good, what kind of perception does it give you? What sort of ideas is it selling you? This guy's, this guy's, this guy's good. This guy's very good. What is it selling? What's the idea they're selling you? He said it. They're selling you optimism. They just want you to think positive. And they put that on caps, t-shirts. They've got 15 different stores in America. They're mostly New England, from Boston up to Maine, Vermont, next to the socialist Ben and Jerry. <laughs> they're relatives anyway. <laughs> so they're selling the idea of optimism. They want you just to think positive. They have these beautiful words on their t-shirts. But look at this. How much does this idea sell? It's incredible that few words on a t-shirt, few words on a t-shirt or a baseball cap 
you worry them thinking they're going to think positive right next day or that moment are they selling it they're selling it well because they're selling an idea and not a t-shirt they're selling a brand and not a baseball cap the point of selling anything like baseball cap and t-shirt is over you sell ideas now how about this place what does it sell because it says there, right? Now, question is this. Is that their tagline? Let me ask you. Is that, a, is that their tagline? Think about it. This is phenomenal. This is the key point of... Go ahead, please. Watch out from basic. Brands cannot be basic. Simple. Now, Five Guys is extremely successful. They open in Riyadh and Hobart and probably coming to Jeddah. They're very popular in America. But when you look at Five Guys positioning versus McDonald's, it's premium. McDonald's is moving premium too, which is funny. But <laughs> it's premium. But what makes it different than McDonald's? Because brand is about differentiation. You know, it's not different as a brand. We're all going to end up looking alike, Annie. It's going to be strange. So what makes a brand so different? What makes this brand different than McDonald's? Quality. I just want to tell you something about quality. Everybody uses the word quality to the point that nobody believes quality today. Am I right? Everybody claims quality. Quality, don't claim it in brand. Don't. By default, you need to deliver quality. Because brand is all about experience. I personally go through an experience. I touch that and I go through it testimonial. I call my friends and family. That brand is great. How about the quality? Awesome. But I come as a brand owner and I say, you know what? My brand is quality. Nobody's going to believe me. It's because it's mine. It's like me standing here. I'm, I'm the best branding and marketeer in the Middle East. You're not going to believe me. But I believe I am. So you don't claim it. Quality is not something you claim. It's part of the experience. So here they're not selling quality. It's simple. Be, watch this. One keyword again. One keyword. McDonald's sells what? No. Fried. Burger, french fry, everything is fried. These people, they sell what? And healthy. But they don't claim healthy. Cleaner. Handmade patties, not machine-made patties. Even the value have changed. They created their own space by creating their own values. That's where they're going fa f fast. There's a strong movement around the world today, which is the health movement, right? People are very conscious of what they consume. Unlike my days when I was your age, we just eat anything. So, it found its space. It grew. So when you look at the tagline, it says burgers and fries. Is that their tagline? That's simply what they sell as a value to you. But through the experience, when you go to Five Guys and you go out and you experience the value, that's where the brand is. Brand is the idea that you sell to people through experience. Thank you so much. I want you to buy me an iced tea. I don't know, you have any questions for me? You don't like me. Yes. Uh, don't call it lecture. I hate lectures. Let's call it friendship. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, exactly. The beginning of our journey. Yes. Because we're getting to know each other, right? Yeah. Now, when exactly. you go home, I want you to talk about Saeed on your social media. Of course, Thank definitely. You. So, at the beginning, yeah. uh, you were saying that uh, a part of the things you do or your job is to go into a company and finish, uh, give them advice in an eight hour, right? That's if they're lucky, eight hours. But <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, is it, is it enough? to go 
through and really research and experience the brand in eight hours because okay. as far as i know you have to you have to stick with one to truly do a good job sure. in branding you have to stick with one brand and really like dive deep into it okay great let me i can answer this question which is great okay. now i will walk you through the experience how it works with me now the ways client reach me either they reach me directly or they reach me through other people now when i'm booked for that session it's usually a week ahead within that week there's a lot of documents we have we, we actually have a, uh, a q a that we send in and they need to answer that q a and there's a touch document that comes in that attached document i do spend time on it so i can do some sort of a framework an idea what is it that they do but again we send back again and ask further questions to understand where it seems to be the problem because we need to go with the weakness side before the strength so once we identify this the weakness and we do the frame we do a little bit of our own online thing but we don't go out and check so we have a very strong insight before we go meet the client so at the session during the eight hours we listen again another full presentation by their chief marketing officer inshallah they'll be called chief branding officers uh, that we, we hear from the chief brand officer, sorry. Um, we hear from them. Then at the end, we give our recommendation. Our recommendation does take about an hour because back and forth debates. Then once we leave, there's a full page email, three paragraphs, unless they pay more, we email that. Simple. But that eight hour session is what we deliver. Yeah. Any other questions? So as you mentioned before about uh, the Mark and Muhammad example, so Muhammad. yeah, Muhammad <laughs> that example, I found that very interesting and I wanted to ask that as a Middle Eastern guy, you had to, I'm sure like you must have faced a lot of difficulty to establish your authenticity in the international market. I just wanted to ask like, how did you overcome those uh, challenges and you know, prove yourself? I like your question. Look, I'm a multicultural person, I've lived in lots of different countries. I uh, grew up more in international schools. Um, so there's that bench right there. And I knew that could be also a strength, traveling to different parts of the world. I mean, if I go to Nigeria, I think I can fail. You know, uh, where are you from? I'm from Pakistan. Pakistan. I think if I went to Islamabad or Lahore or Karachi, I'll fit, you know? So there's that bench. Now, being Middle Eastern, every brand has an origin. I mean, when you think of Apple, which country do you think of? When you think Ferrari? Huh? When you think of El Baik? But you know, there's a perception also that you have to deal with. When you think of Saudi Arabia or Yemen, you come in on the international level as a branding and marketing uh, consultant. Branding and marketing are pretty fancy. You're working with big brands. The question is like, how in the world would people from Yemen or Saudi Arabia connect with this idea? Now, if you're selling the brand idea, the origin does not connect. And that's sort of a battle you have. But it's how you tell your story. It's how you bring yourself, the look and feel, the experience, the promise you bring with just override all that. Any other questions? Thank you so much for inviting me. It's been five years. Thank you.